Hello everyone, I'm Jia Chengma, a PhD student at University of Michigan. Today I'm going to talk to you about Optimus, a hypervisor we build for shared memory FPGA platforms. I want to emphasize that the keywords a hypervisor, shared memory, and FPGA. Currently, FPGAs are widely deployed in the cloud by a number of different cloud providers, such as Amazon and Microsoft. FPGAs have a lot of use cases, including circuit simulation, database acceleration, and machine learning. It is fair to assume that FPGA-based acceleration will be increasingly more common in a cloud environment, and we believe that we should think about better system support. That is where hypervisors come into play. But why do we need a hypervisor? Well, here's the reason. Most cloud-based FPGAs use what is called the pass-through model, which is a method to directly assign one FPGA to one virtual machine. Since the user may not be able to fully utilize the FPGA, a pass-through-based solution may lead to low resource utilization. On the other hand, cloud providers always want to make more money by selling limited hardware resources to more customers, for which virtualization is a tested and true solution. So enabling the better utilization of FPJ resources was one of our key goals in this project. There are two types of FPJs that a hypervisor can virtualize. These are the host-centric FPJs and the shared memory FPJs. In a host-centric FPJ, the CPU controls direct memory access, DMAs. To do this, the CPU programs a DMA engine to read data from the main memory. The DMA engine will then stream the data to the accelerator. When the acceleration task is done, the accelerator will stream the output to the DMA engine. Then the DMA engine will write it back to the main memory. On the other hand, in a shared memory platform, the DMA is controlled by the accelerator itself. Shared memory platforms do not have a DMA engine. However, the accelerator is usually tightly coupled with a bunch of DMA logic that can access data from the main memory. There are a number of previous works in this field, and all of them only focus on host-centric FPGAs. Unlike these works, Optimus focuses on shared memory FPGAs. But why do we care so much about the shared memory platform? Let me tell you what's the benefit of using the shared memory programming model. Many applications need to access non continuous data, such as during graph processing and database acceleration. In a host-centric platform, the application has to configure the DMA engine multiple times. That is, the application must tell the DMA engine about the base addresses of each memory region one after another. This can become quite inefficient. However, on a shared memory platform, the application can construct a linked list and send the base address of the first node to the accelerator. Then, the accelerator can fetch all the data itself and bypass the CPU, which can be quite efficient. To demonstrate the extent to which the shared memory platforms can be more efficient than the host centric platform, we use a graph processing algorithm as an example. Here the blue bar demonstrates the processing time for the host centric implementation and the red bar demonstrates the processing time for the shared memory implementation of the same algorithm. So here, lower is better. And as we can see, the shared memory implementation always outperforms the host centric one. To sum up, the shared memory platform performs well when accessing non conductive data and that's one important reason why this platform matters and that we are excited about it. To enable the virtualization of shared memory FPGAs, we build Optimus. Optimus is a scalable hypervisor for shared memory FPGA platforms. It provides both spatial multiplexing and temporal multiplexing and incurs less than 10% throughput overhead. Optimus can achieve linear scalability until the memory bandwidth is saturated. In the rest of this talk, I'll introduce the design and the implementation of Optimus and how we evaluate it. So let's get started with the design first. But before going to the design details of Optimus, I need to define two terms, the control plane and the data plane. The CPU sends commands to the FPGA via the control plane. In most platforms, the control commands are sent using memory mapped I.O. Through the data plane, the data needed by the acceleration task is transmitted 
and in most platforms, the data is transmitted through direct memory access. Now, let me show you the architecture of Optimus. In the FPGA part, there are multiple accelerators, and the hardware manager manages the interconnection of the accelerators to the CPU. The Optimus hypervisor lays at the bottom layer of the software stack, and the multiple virtual machines can run on top of the hypervisor. Applications inside the virtual machine can use different accelerators. A physical accelerator can either be shared among multiple applications, or be occupied by a single application. Optimus uses CHAP and Emulate to virtualize the control plane. When the application accesses the MMIO, the MMIO access will be trapped by the hypervisor and then forwarded to the correct physical accelerator. Compared to the simplicity of the control plane, the virtualization of the data plane is much more challenging. This is for two reasons. First, the data plan needs to bypass the hypervisor for performance reasons. And second, the application and the accelerator should be able to use the same address to access the same data. So how does Optimus achieve data plan virtualization? In the CPU, a gas virtual address is translated into a gas physical address via the gas page table. The gas physical address is then translated into a host physical address via the extended page table. We can do this because the CPU has a cool feature called a nest paging, which allows using two levels of page table translations. However, the FPJ does not have this feature, and there is only one page table in the memory path. Given this limitation, how can we use guest virtual addresses in the accelerator? We achieve this with the help of our old friend in virtualization, the shadow page table. A shadow page table is a page table that directly translates guest virtual address to host physical address, and any modification of the guest page table will be reflected to the shadow page table. So, in a nutshell, the shadow page table will allow accelerators to use guest virtual addresses. However, a naive implementation of the shadow page table is not sufficient. Different accelerators may use the same guest virtual address and cause a conflict in the shadow page table. This violates one of the basic rules in virtualization, which is isolation. To solve this problem, we partition the page table into several slices and assign each application one slice, and as a result, there won't be any address conflict. However, the problem is still not solved because accelerators can only use a subset of guest virtual addresses now. To solve this, the hardware manager will add the correct offset that can ensure the address falls into a correct shadow page table slice. We call the combination of page table partitioning and address offsetting page table slicing. And with the help of page table slicing, we can share a pointer between the application and the accelerator and achieve proper isolation. Now that I have talked about the shadow page table and the page table slicing, the next important component is called hardware manager. The hardware manager adds an offset to the guest virtual address to support page table slicing. The hardware manager does this using a component we call the auditor. The auditor is the first component inside the hardware manager that the packet will go through. Each vehicle accelerator has its own auditor, and these auditors are all connected to a multiplexer tree. The auditor will add the offset to the guest virtual address and then propagate the packet to the multiplexer tree. And finally, the multiplexer tree will propagate the packet to the CPU FPJ interconnection. When the response comes back, the multiplexer tree will propagate the packet to all auditors. And each auditor will decide whether a packet belongs to its corresponding accelerator. If the answer is no, it will drop the packet, otherwise, it will send the packet to the accelerator. Accelerators with Optimus can be temporarily multiplexed as well. Different applications can take terms using the same physical accelerator. For example, Optimus can have a contact switch every 10 milliseconds and change a different application to serve. Optimus only provides software support for temporal multiplexing and the accelerator still needs to implement a specific interface. 
This interface includes how to start, stop, and preempt a job, as well as how to check the status of a job. After receiving the preemption command, the accelerator needs to save and restore the contact via the data plane. Now that I've discussed the design of Optimus, I'll talk about a few implementation details. We implemented Optimus on the Intel Hub platform, which has a Scalic CPU and an Arrow 10 FPGA in the same socket. The Hivisor implementation is based on KVM, which has a Hivisor built inside the Linux kernel and is a standard way of virtualization in Linux. We further use VFL MDiv to perform trapping and emulation. During the implementation, we realized that we need to perform some special optimizations for this platform. Now, let me tell you more about those optimizations. After our initial implementation, we looked at the performance behavior of a benchmark called Memory Bench. Memory Bench performs random writes from the FPGA to the memory to saturate the memory bandwidth. We measure the write throughput with the increasing working set size. So here, the x-axis is the size of the working set, and the y-axis is the throughput. As you can see, when the working set is beyond 4 MB, the throughput degrades substantially. This is definitely not OK because it's 2020 and the working set of 4 MB is too small. Our hypothesis was that the performance degradation was due to frequent TLB misses. When the working set grows beyond a certain point, the TLB does not have enough entries to catch the adjust translation information. In that case, the page table worker must work the page table to translate the address, which is pretty slow. We solved this problem by forcing the virtual machine to use 2 MB huge pages. Given the same amount of TLB entries, a TLB for larger pages can catch address translation for a larger working set and result in much fewer TLB misses. After applying the huge page optimization, we ran the same experiment, and as expected, we got rid of the performance degradation at the 4 MB mark which is good. However, we found that there are still some performance degradations when there are multiple virtual machines. Our theory was that the root cause of the new performance degradation was TLB thrashing. We figured out that TLB entries of different virtual machines were not evicting each other in the set associated TLB of hub. In the design of Optimus, each virtual accelerator can access a contiguous memory slice and the slice is aligned to a power of 2. As a result, the base addresses of each slice will share the same TLB entry and cause TLB thrashing. We solved this problem by adding a padding between each slice. After adding the padding, the base addresses of slices are no longer aligned to a power of 2, and they will occupy different entries in the TLB. This mitigates the TLB thrashing problem. Next, I'm going to talk about our evaluation method and our results. In the paper, we evaluate the efficiency, scalability, and fairness of Optimus. However, I only talk about the efficiency and the scalability here due to timing constraints. We use 14 benchmarks to evaluate Optimus. Among these 14 benchmarks, Memory Bench and the Linker List are designed by ourselves as two macro benchmarks. Memory Bench saturates the memory bandwidth, and the Linker List allows us to observe the worst case latency behavior because each node needs to be accessed sequentially. The rest 12 benchmarks are from different sources, and they include applications such as Bitcoin mining, graph processing, image processing, signal processing, etc. First, we evaluate the efficiency of Optimus by comparing Optimus against the path rule. Remember that in the path rule model, the applications have direct access to accelerators. Here are the results. This graph shows the overhead in terms of latency. The latency is measured by working a linked list. The y-axis is the latency normalized to the baseline, which is the latency on the path rule. As we can see, Optimus incurs a 24% of overhead in terms of latency. The second graph shows overhead in terms of throughput. Similar to the latency one, the y-axis is the throughput normalized to the baseline, which is path rule. And the x-axis has different benchmarks. As we can see, Optimus incurs 10% of overhead in terms of throughput at most, and for 8 out of these 13 benchmarks, the overhead is less than 1%. Based on this experiment, we conclude that Optimus incurs low overhead. We then use the linked list benchmark to measure the latency with the increasing number of VMs and the increasing working set size. 
the x-axis is the size of the working set, and the, and the different colors represent the different numbers of virtual machines. The y-axis is the average latency measured by linked list benchmark. So here, lower is better. We can see that optimum scales rarely well until 2 GB, and after that, the TOB is full and the latency increases. We then measure the throughput using the memory bench macro benchmark, also with the increasing number of VMs and the increasing working set size. Now the y-axis is the aggregate throughput of the memory bench instances running inside all virtual machines, so here, higher is better. Just like the previous experiment, we can see that optimum scales really well until the working set reaches 2 GB. After that, the TOB is full and we can see a drop in throughput. Based on these two experiments, we conclude that Optimus does not hurt scalability for memory-intensive applications and it scales well until the TLB is full. However, most benchmarks are not memory-intensive. In this experiment, we evaluate 12 real benchmarks and calculate the aggregate throughput with the increasing number of VMs. We normalize the throughput results to the throughput of an application running inside a single virtual machine. We found that some of these benchmarks can achieve linear scalability, but we can also see some benchmarks stop scaling linearly beyond a certain point. These benchmarks are more bandwidth intensive than others. Therefore, when there are 8 virtual machines, the bandwidth of the memory channel is already saturated for such benchmarks. Based on this experiment, we conclude that Optimus can scale linearly until the memory bandwidth is saturated. To conclude, we build Optimus a advisor for shared memory FPGAs, Optimus can provide both spatial multiplexing and temporal multiplexing and incurs less than 10% throughput overhead compared to pass-through. Optimus can achieve linear scalability until the bandwidth is saturated. Optimus is open source. The artifact was evaluated and obtained the artifacts available and the reusable bugs, and you can find the code in this GitHub repo. Thanks for listening, and I'm so sad that there won't be a real-time question session but please reach out to me to talk more about Optimus.